enterprises are pushing past fifty dollars again, which I would say two thousand and ten pre Fukushima. You would have been, this is shitty, but 50 is amazing now, <laughs> where I would say 65 is where you're going to see a lot of production and producers. Why is it pushing higher? You're seeing more and more countries announcing that, hey, we have to go back to nuclear right now. And uranium prices, after having a massive move, come down tremendously, like we're seeing almost in every freaking sector across the board. You're not seeing a sector you invested in like nine months ago that continues to go higher and higher. You're seeing 40% moves up, 30% moves down, and then back and forth. Uranium's on an uptrend right now. This uptrend, I think, is really going to be sustainable because of the amount of countries that are announcing that, hey, we, we, it's not like they have a choice anymore, especially in Europe. We don't have a choice. We have to go back to nuclear. And you're seeing, you're seeing France, you're seeing Germany, you're seeing Japan, Belgium, all of them. Even Elon Musk, massive, massive fan, has a massive following. Uh, to me, this makes sense. It just makes sense right now. He actually mentioned we need oil and gas. I'm sure he thinks nuclear too, but I like that being the electric guy. I think you have two main uh, tailwinds for uranium. One, obviously the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and you want to sanction Russia, so you're getting off a lot of their oil and gas. You have to have something to replace that. Green, quote unquote, with solar and wind is not there yet. And then two, you have this push to zero emissions. And... Frank, if you're going to transition from one to the other, <laughs> I, I don't – listen, I get you understand about, hey, we don't want to be around a nuclear power plant because if it go, something goes wrong, you have this meltdown, you have chaos, you have – you know that's crazy. I understand that fear. However, you cannot get to zero emissions or whatever goals, lofty goals that government agencies set without nuclear power. And to your point, you're seeing a lot of people, even here in the U.S., even California is thinking about extending some of the life of their nuclear reactors. You have a lot going into production, uh, construction, et cetera. However, the good thing for the bulls, in my opinion, is that – and I don't know, but Frank, give me a decade here – if we announce that we're going to start building a power plant, we're not going to be up and running and actually serving any customers for at least so. huh? decade. Yeah, decade at least, one, right? One, decade, yep. you know, seven to 10 years if you've got the best contractors and the best money and supplies and all that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a natural bull thing. And in fact, to pat us on the back, even though it's been volatile, we wrote back, Frank, in October of 2018 when Cameco, CCJ, was trading around $12 a share. And we said, hey, basically buy this and forget about it because the bull, you know, there were some head fakes that you just mentioned. Yes, it pulled back from $12 down to 9 so you would have been down 25 30%. But again, if you're buying energy stocks for the long term, it's been not quite four years. And where is CCJ right now? It's about $30 a share. Mm -hmm. So 12 to 30 in less than four years when you just said, hey, buy it and forget about it. Because the long-term trend, it, to your point, just like the metaverse, it, it's coming. This is the future. If you're going to do half of what everybody pledges to, you're going to have to use your uh, nuclear energy. So I've been uh, looking at natural gas for a long time, especially since uh, you know we had trucking companies that were going to go natural gas. I put up a chart now if you want to see it. This is EU natural gas, <laughs> where when you look, they used to have a map of the country. And this is why LNG always made sense, and that's this is why when we started producing, like people forget, I think it's Shinier or Shinier, whatever, however you pronounce it. I mean, now that stock is absolutely soaring, but they were first looking to import. When they built those facilities, they were looking to import natural gas, right? And then we said, holy shit, the fracking boom, we have so much gas, we could export now. So they had to change the whole thing, right? So now we're exporting. And when you look around the country, it always made sense because around 3x to 4x, depending where, if you're looking at Asia, you're looking at Europe, 3 to 4x, their the natural gas prices were higher than ours. So you could you know, produce it here and sell it for that. That's a nice margin there, right? And Again, without shipping costs or whatever, but it was still nice margins. So if you look at a chart I'm looking at right now, you're looking at natural gas. November 2020 was at $12. Uh, it was at 4 or $5 in, in, in August 2020. You're looking at $350. <laughs> you're looking at, now it's like two thirty five, which, you know, it's come down. But, you know, you, you're looking at, you know, people are upset about energy and gasoline prices going from three fifty to 5 Hey, this is this is an absolute joke. This is what happens when you're dependent on one country and you start messing with them. When when it's forty percent of your energy needs because energy controls the world. It's not technology because technology is run by electricity and electricity is, get, is run by energy. So what's going on? Well, Germany is like, all right, f this. All right, the whole you know environmental thing and carbon free. Forget it because Germany just said, okay, we have to increase coal usage now. We have no choice. We're going to increase coal usage. So so this you know, is going through Parliament and everything. They're going to revive fifteen coal fire plants, right? Which were slated to be phased out. So these are already built. 
They're already there. They're not building these coal fired plants. It's not like China that's building them like crazy and, and laughing at everybody else with this whole, you know, green initiative, right? Uh, where, you know, we, do we need green? Yes, but not to the point where we, we're replacing, right? We don't not, not just get rid of fossil fuels completely like we're trying to do. This is what happens energy prices. So now they have to do this heading into, into winter. They don't want to do this. But now Australia is also doing the same when it comes to coal. You're looking at all the European nations. They have to do this. They have to do this. They need it for the winter. This is like life or death for them, right? So it, 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 there's, there's you know, no decision here. But you look at Germany as a European leader, right? They're a large GDP outside. They're uh, 25 times bigger than the UK. But outside the UK, it's three times that of Russia GDP, two times size of Italy, Spain. So you have the largest one in the world doing this. They're all going to follow, right? You're setting precedence. You're like, okay, we're going to go more coal. So now you're seeing nuclear make a better play. Why? Because nuclear is the greatest thing in the world. It's very, very easy. It's very safe as we see. I don't know why. If you look at a map of the Ring of Fire, I think it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. The Ring of Fire is where the most earthquakes happen. And that happens to be where the most nuclear plants are built, <laughs> right? Which makes me laugh. So, you know, that's why we got Fukushima. But you restart it. Belgium, France, Japan, restarting plants of nuclear, right? This is clean energy, right? Outside of California, who love green energy, but hate the cheapest, safest, most reliable source of baseload power in the world, right? They hate nuclear for some reason. They think they're all going to die tomorrow, right? They, I think they're looking to close a plant. But Japan, Belgium, France, you're seeing this, right? You're seeing prices go above $50 now, right? I mean, they were below 30 at one time. They went to almost 60 at the last run up. It came down to 35, 30s again. I think uh, high 30s. Now we're, we're pushing higher because they don't have a choice. It's not like, oh, this is politics. You can't play politics anymore. This is about people's lives, right? You don't have energy. You don't have energy. You don't have electricity. You're going into winter going, holy shit, are we going to be able to power our homes? Are people going to freeze to death, right? Older people. So now is the time. Now you're seeing where uranium stocks have pulled back, the chemicals, the UECs. I mean, these are, these are good names. I have a uranium royalty in my portfolio for a very long time. Again, I rode that out, which was not that good, and then it, it's very, very good now. It's come off the highs, but these things are still down 35% off their highs, even though they, they've had a nice rally recently. Have uranium right now, okay? People will tell me to buy uranium for freaking 15 years, 10 years, 7 years. After Fukushima, it's been a disaster, okay? And these companies were not producing. All they did was dilute the shit out of everybody, right? Because they're not generating any money. They keep diluting, diluting, diluting to raise money. Now's the time you're going to see a lot of this stuff start come online. And you look at domestic producers, Encore is one that I like a lot, which I'm invested in. That's a hidden one that, that bought a Zager under, under the radar. I just think it's you know cheaper than UEC, but UEC is definitely one of the best in, in the US. And you have Cameco, Canadian. Have exposure to the sector because now the catalyst is here. You're seeing prices going higher. And Russia, this thing isn't going away tomorrow, Daniel. It's not going away tomorrow. So for me, uranium is definitely a sector that, that you can invest in. Don't think that you missed the boat. Now it's for real. Japan doesn't have a choice. I know they're going to try to say, well, we're going to, you know, back and forth. First it was like, yeah, we're restarting and then dial it back a little bit. And they have to, they have no choice because it's coal or nuclear right now. And coal is a disaster when it's just, you know, again, it, it defeats the purpose of everything that you've done on climate change so far and all the bullshit in your agenda and everything that you've said. Just to go back to coal is kind of a slap in the face. Nuclear is sitting there. It's for the taking. A lot of these plants exist. You just shut them down. You can restart a lot of these, which a lot of them are in Europe. When they do, that's when you're going to see this really, really take off where prices could hit 100. Okay. And we're at just broke through 50. They could easily, easily double here. I think they were 130, 140 pre Fukushima. You have to do it now. These natural gas prices are out of control. That's not going to change anytime soon. That's a trend that is going to happen. I think this is an area that you could definitely invest in. I like it. Well said. Yeah, I'm with you. You can buy any of those. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's crazy to see. Like, you know, again, I, I've been in these where I was able to get warrants and invest in private placements, and a lot of you invest in private places alongside of me, uh, and held them, and they was shit. But now, you know, you have five year warrants on some of these deals, and yeah, you know, we're making out very, very well on, on some of these things. But for me, I'm holding it. I sold some of it. I took some profits in, in some of these names. I'm holding the rest of my position. I think this is one of the best sectors that you could possibly be in. Now is the time. Everyone's been pitching this thing for five years, seven years, nine years. Again, since since Fukushima happened, what was it, 2011, everyone's pitching and it's going to go higher, 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 all the way to this time. Right now is the time where the catalysts are here right now. And you have a chance to buy these things at cheap levels. Don't look at you missed the 30% move off the lows because they're still down 40% from their highs, recent highs from whatever, six months ago. Now I'm more bullish on uranium than I've ever been. I've owned these stocks for a long time. I was always skeptical and saying, you know, we need to see the callus. We need to see the callus. Here's the callus. It's right in front of you. 
Europe has to go back unless they want to go all coal, and they're not going to go all coal. They're restarting coal, but you're going to see a lot of these plants open up. You're going to see more and more positive news in this sector. And this is one of the areas I think you can make money in this market over the next three to five years, at least, regardless of these crazy market conditions, which, uh, you know, everything's bouncing all over the place. So.